What's going on guys, Slavey here. Welcome back to another Albion Online video. Today we will go over some of the most important AoE abilities for larger fights in Albion Online. With the Faction Warfare rework, a lot more people are participating in this content, and there are constant fights all over the Royal Continent. Some of these fights are taking place in the yellow zones, where you can participate in your best gear without having to worry about losing them. This attracts a lot of new players to this content who wish to get their first taste for ZVZ. However, with this many people participating, each with a bunch of skills available to them, it gets overwhelming very quick and you often die without knowing what's going on. After watching this video, you will recognize a lot more of the things that are happening on the battlefield and can start using this newly gained knowledge to your advantage. The first ability we will look at is the Void. This ability belongs to the Malevolent Locus, which is one of the seven arcane weapons which players simply call Locus. The arcane tree is a support tree, so if you wish to play as a support, this tree is a great one to look into. You will recognize the Void ability by the Dark Bubble that grows in size over the following seconds. Whilst this ability is being casted, you can't interrupt the person casting it, which is a very strong perk that leaves this ability with little counterplay to it. Within the bubble, all debuffs and crowd control effects that affect your allies negatively are removed. The only thing that isn't removed are damage over time effects. Whilst cleansing your allies from debuffs and CC, you also give all of your allies within the Void a resistance buff, which makes them noticeably more tanky. And not only does the Void affect your allies, it also affects the enemies. All enemies that enter the bubble have all of their buffs removed. Everything together makes the Locus and its ability a very strong ZVZ weapon. It's recommended that you have at least one Locus in every 20-man party, and having a second one is a pretty good idea as well. When you have two Locus in your party, you can have one play the weapon offensive, meaning you cast the Void on the location where your team engages, and the second Locus defensive, which is when you cast the Void where your team gets engaged on. The second ability we will go over belongs to an armor and is named Force Shield. This ability belongs to the Judicator armor, which is one of the plate armors. The high defenses this armor has makes it a perfect pick for tanks and support players. When you use this ability, just like its name, a Force Shield manifests itself on your location. Now this coincidentally also looks like a bubble, however a big blue bubble this time. And just like the bubble of the Locus, it also increases the defenses of your allies that stand within it. Meaning they once again become more tanky by being within the bubble. Not only do your allies defenses increase, but their healing received also increases when they are within the force shield. Making this ability a very strong defensive one that contributes enormously to your team's sustain. Now this ability is limited to 10 allies, but any good party of 20 will have multiple Judicator armors within their roster. Tanks will often place their force shield in the front, providing the buff to your frontline players, which are your bruisers and your tanks. Whereas support players will often place their force shield in the back to protect the backline players who consist of the healers, range of DPS and supports. A big plus of the force shield is that once it's used, it will stay on the casted location for its duration meaning it cannot be purged whatsoever. Ever seen a red shockwave that pulls everyone it hits to the center of it, followed by a massive deletion of player characters, but what you saw was the Vendetta ability that belongs to the Camlin Mace. Vendetta is the third ability we will go over, and is one of the strongest abilities to group all the enemies together, so that your DPS can cast their skills on the clump and potentially delete everyone that got hit by it. The Camden Mace is played by tanks and is the perfect weapon to start engages. Once you throw the Vendetta, the first person it gets in contact with pulls everyone around them toward their own location after a short delay. Once everyone is pulled in, they also get stunned for a short duration and take a tiny bit of damage from this ability. As big of an ability this is, as someone that plays the Camden quite often, I do feel like it's a pretty difficult ability to pull off. It has cast time to it, meaning players can interrupt you as soon as you are about to use this ability. This often requires you to position yourself slightly out of the fight if you wish to successfully land the Vendetta, which is a bit of a counterintuitive action for a tank to make, as you are often in the middle of the fight. The cast time also makes it possible for enemies who are quick to react to dodge this ability altogether. 
In ZVZ groups, some of the players typically have night helmets, which grants them and allies around them displacement immunity, making it so that they don't get pulled in with the Vendetta, even if one of their allies got hit by it. So finally, a tip, if you ever get hit by a Vendetta, instead of running towards your team and pulling more of them in, run the opposite direction, possibly towards the enemy team, to save your allies. Although there is quite some counterplay against the Vendetta, it still remains one of the strongest ZVZ abilities within the game. The fourth ability we will go over is Cataclysm, which is the special ability of the Damnation Staff. The Damnation Staff is one of the curse weapons, which is a weapon tree known for its damage over time and disruptive abilities. This ability covers an enormous amount of ground, and any enemies hit by it receive some damage over time, but more importantly, have their resistances reduced, which causes them to take more damage from all sources and abilities. You can recognize the skill by the big and quick red swirl of curse, but if you've seen the animation and stood in it the moment you saw it, it's already too late and you've been hit by it already. Luckily, this skill has quite the cast time to it, giving you a chance to get out of the AoE before it even hits. This also means that if you decide to play the Damnation Staff yourself, some form of cast speed increase, such as the Scholar Rope, is very good to have. The Cataclysm ability can also be interrupted, so if you are a tank and notice the enemy Damnation Staff player, it might be worth putting in some extra effort to stop the Cataclysm from being casted altogether. If you like the idea of debuffing your enemies while simultaneously doing AoE damage, the Damnation Staff is simply perfect for you. Even more so because one of the W abilities of the Curse Staff is the Armor Piercer, which has only half the cooldown of Cataclysm and also reduces resistances and does AoE damage. Although this one has the shape of a beam, instead of a large circle, it's still a very powerful skill that's nice to have in ZVZ. So if you play the Damnation Staff, you will have an AoE Pierce and Damage ability on two of your skills. And for our fifth and final ability, we have the Frozen Hell ability, which belongs to the Icicle Staff. The Icicle Staff is one of the Frost Staffs, which is a weapon tree often played offensively. But within the Frost Tree, there are some weapons that can be played as support as well, and one of them is the Icicle Staff. When you use this ability, you create a blizzard at the targeted location, deals damage to all enemies every second they stand in it, whilst also slowing them very heavily. What makes the slow even more powerful is the fact it ignores crowd control resistances completely. This makes the Frozen Hell ability a very powerful zoning tool that can have an enormous impact on the battlefield. The fact it's an instant cast ability adds to the zoning potential and with that to its impact pretty much making this ability live up to its name. Put the Knight Armor on if you are playing the Icicle Staff as a support, and you add even more zoning potential to your build by pushing enemies back with the Wind Wall. I think these 5 AoE abilities are perhaps the most important ones to learn about for ZVZ and Faction Warfare. But with so many different abilities in the game, knowing only these 5 won't be enough. I will do my best to cover more important abilities in future videos, and in the meanwhile, you can check out the video that's in the description and pinned in the comments below, which goes over 5 important PvP abilities and their effects, such as Reflex and Purges. Go watch that one next if you haven't yet, but not before hitting that like button if you enjoyed this video. I hope you learned a thing or two, and I'll see you next time.